So the title of this sermon I did last week uh, at my training that we were taking, and it was Peace Be With You. Um, and it comes from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. <clears throat> On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, when the doors locked in fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father had sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So, what's that tell us? It tells us, well, we're either forgiven or we're not forgiven, Jesus said. And as the Father has sent me, has sent Jesus, I am sending you, he told the disciples. Jesus identified himself with his Father. He told the disciples by whose authority he did his work. Then he passed the job on to his disciple of spreading the news of the gospel around the world. To do God's work, we need guidance and power of the Holy Spirit. We must avoid trying to do God's work within our own strength. I want to pick up uh, on verse 24 now on the screen. When it goes about Thomas, and we've all heard about Thomas. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were in the house again. And Thomas was with them this time. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, Oh my Lord, oh my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. And blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So that's me. Not seen, yet have believed, right? And I hope we're all feeling that way this morning. Now, on chapter 30, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of the disciples, and some of them are not recorded, but those are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. <clears throat> so, Jesus wasn't very hard on Thomas. So he, Seems like he's giving him a big break, you know. He's like, well, I, unless I can touch it, I'm not going to believe. And then, he, then Jesus comes in and says, well, you know, see, believe. But blessed are those that believe that do not see. I mean, how great would it be to see Jesus in the flesh? Could you imagine him just showing up in here one morning? And we're all in here. The, and he just shows up. I mean, this is what happened to the disciples. It was pretty amazing. So, again, he says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So some people need to doubt before they can believe. If doubt leads to questions and questions lead to answers, then the answers are accepted. Then doubt has done good work. So if we ask questions and we get answers, and we seek answers, then doubt has done good work. So, do you have any doubts? Is there doubts here? There's always some kind of doubt. But Jesus is not hard with doubts, like he was on Thomas. 
You know, he gives you a chance to ask the questions, to seek, and to believe. You must truly believe and not doubt Christ. The gospel includes everything we need to know to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, through whom we can receive eternal life. Once we repent and accept Jesus in our heart as our Lord and Savior, then peace will be with you. So I want to read a little bit about uh, going back to Thomas. So Thomas, often remembered as doubting Thomas, deserves to be respected for his faith. He was a doubter, but his doubts had purpose. He wanted to know the truth. Thomas did not analyze doubts. He gladly believed, given reasons to do so. He expressed his doubts fully and had them answered completely. Doubting was only his way of responding, not his way of life. Although our glimpses of Thomas are brief, his character comes through with consistency. He struggled to be faithful to what he knew despite of what he felt. At one point when he was plain to everyone that Jesus' life was in danger, only Thomas put into words what was most feeling. Let us also go that we may die with him. Put into work, uh, John eleven sixteen. He did not hesitate to follow Jesus. So we don't know why Thomas was absent that first day. But he can doubt without having to live doubting way of life. So you don't have to have a doubting way of life. But if there's doubts, seek answers. And answers will be accepted. And if, and if the answers are accepted... The doubt has done good work. So, repent in our heart to the Lord and Savior. Then peace will be with you.